My name is Dr. P. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about uh, time management. It's one of, if not the top skill that I need, that I think students need to survive and thrive in high school and beyond. So the sooner maybe you can kind of get some tips and tricks to help you manage your time, the better off you'll be. So um, let's just, I found out a little bit about these guys down here. So maybe you could just tell me your name and what grade you're in. I'm Shannon, I'm in eighth grade. Okay, good. So we have eighth, ninth, and tenth. Awesome. Um, and so just so that you know who I am, I used to be a high school teacher full time. And about five years ago, I started my company called Crimson Coaching, which is a tutoring company. And I do everything from, you know, test prep and college apps. But when I tutored, especially kids who are having trouble in school, one of the first things I noticed in kind of sitting down with them one on one was it wasn't, for example, just having trouble with history or math. It was often skills that they lacked that were, that were compounding any problems that they were having in those subjects. And so that's why I began to teach the course that I'm starting to teach tomorrow night in Mamaroneck and where this talk came from, which is a very shortened version of the course that I'll be giving in Mamaroneck. And so I really feel like it's often not a matter of intellectual understanding of the content. It's more, oh, how do I organize my time? How do I organize my stuff? That then makes the history or math learning a lot easier. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to talk, but we're, we're a really small group, so feel free, if you have any questions, kind of just, you know, raise your hand and I'll ask questions. I also, I stream all my talks on Facebook Live, so I, I, you guys aren't on camera, I am, and there may just be a question or something that comes in from those people over there. Um, and so, one of the main themes for tonight is, um, how, you're, how you use your time reflects your goals, or does it? Some of us think we have goals, but hi, come on in. Feel free here. I'm going to give each of you a card. Thanks. Um, some of us think we might have a goal, say, to get an A in math, but if we spend five hours a day playing Fortnite, how we're spending our time may not really reflect our goals. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to use the card that I gave you. And parents, you can do this as well, but just think of more about, you know, rather than in school time, your own life, okay? And I want you just in like the next 30 seconds to write down a goal you have for tonight's workshop. Okay, just one goal. Do you guys need pens in the front row? And if anybody borrowed a pen, if you could just return it to me, because I give lots of these talks and lots of people don't bring pens. Yeah. I think it was pens out. Oh, okay. Let me give you another one. Yours is out too? Oh, all these dead pens. Okay, try this one. Really? Maybe it's because it was cold in the car. No? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, how are your pens? Okay, once you're done with your goal for tonight's workshop, I'd like you to skip two lines and write down a goal that you have for the rest of the school year. So parents, you could think about for like the next six months. And try to be as specific as possible in your goals. So don't just write, I want to do better in algebra. You may say, I want to get a 92 in algebra, or whatever your goal is, okay? So the more specific you are, the better.
And then I want you to skip two lines. And then I'd like you to uh, finally write down a goal that you may have. If you're already in high school, that's great. If you're not yet in high school, you could also write down, if you're in eighth grade, what your goal for high school will be. And if you're in um, middle school, so maybe sixth grade or seventh grade, you can just write down the rest of your goals for middle school, okay? Just one goal. So what do you think I had you skip two lines in between each goal? Aiden. So you can make like notes on them? We, we are going to add some writing there. What kind of notes do you think I'm going to have you do? How are you going to achieve the goal? Ah, how are we going to achieve the goal? Because I could say, for example, I'm going to run the New York City Marathon in November, right? But if I don't have a plan to get there as a non-runner right now, I will never be able to do that. So after each goal, I'd like you to write one concrete action. So not just like study harder, but if your goal is say to get a 92 in algebra, maybe you're going to say, I will study for 15 minutes of algebra every day, or I will go visit my algebra teacher at least one time a week before school. Okay? So take a moment and write three concrete actions, one for each goal. So you may say, you know, I thought this was a talk about time management. Why is this lady who's standing up here talking to us having us write down our goals? I'm having you do that because it's my belief that the strategies I'm teaching you in this workshop may seem uncomfortable for you at first. You may not actually want to do them. They may not feel good at first, but I do believe that if your goals are serious and important, most likely these strategies will help you achieve your goals that you have there because how we use our time kind of informs everything we do in our life. So studies show that people who think about their goals are a little bit more likely to achieve them than those who just go through life and just don't even think about goals, right? But studies show that people who actually write down their goals are 50% more likely to achieve them than people who don't write them down at all. So that's even if you just throw this out at the end of the, the workshop. But what I encourage all my students to do is actually keep this little card maybe put it next to your bed or if you're afraid you're going to lose it you could take a picture with it on your phone and maybe use it as your wallpaper on your phone so that you're looking at your goals every day because these strategies are going to require you to give up some things that you want to do 
And if you have in the top of your mind, oh, my goal is to get a 92 in algebra, and so maybe I need to just play one hour fortnight rather than five a day, that may help you to make that decision, okay? Because ultimately, right now, maybe your parents are dictating how you use your time. But very, very soon, you're going to be more in charge of how you use your time, and you're the one who's going to need to make those decisions for yourself, not your parents, okay? So if you want more on goal setting, I actually have on my website, and you can, um, later on, you can get my card to give my website there. Um, I have a whole ebook, a free ebook that you can download about goal setting. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, you may have to give things up, and I do think it's important to look at your goals every day, okay? So uh, how many of you are in middle school? Raise your hands. Okay, so if you're in middle school, you'll know you probably don't have that that much flexibility or free time during the day. But very soon, as our sophomore knows, right, you get free periods during the day. And so again, it's a choice. How will you use those free periods? I say you should use your free periods, first of all, to maximize the amount and type of homework you accomplish. So what do I mean by that? You should do homework, not that takes you two hours if your free period is 45 minutes. But you should do an assignment that takes about 45 minutes so you can cross that off your list and get that one done, okay? You also may say, say if your free period is first period and you are not a morning person, well, maybe you want to leave like an easier subject for them. But if you are a morning person and say you really struggle with physics, you may want to do your physics homework then when you're the most bright and alert. And that also applies for on the weekends as well when, you're, when you have the whole day to consider. So um, again, tr on the weekends, try to do the hardest subject for you when you feel the most alert. So usually teenagers feel the most alert after like 5 or 6 p.m. How many people would say that's true for them? Yeah. So you probably want to do your harder subjects then. Okay. Um, you can also maximize your time. Say if you have a long bus ride or you're going to grandma and grandpa's house or you have some long car ride. Do kind of review tasks. So you could see, and I have no uh, stock in index card companies, but I do love them. So I recommend doing these for, say, foreign language vocabulary, or even if you have vocabulary words for English class, or just any kind of fact-based biology parts of the cell, and use those downtime to study those kinds of things, and you'll, you'll be amazed at how much you can kind of get done during that time. Um, one time at one of these talks, I had a student ask, um, you know, they, they give a lot of homework at that particular high school. She was up until all hours of the night. She was also in all like honors, AP kind of classes. She wanted to get A's. And then she was also in theater, which requires a lot of time. It's kind of like sports. Sports and theater require a lot of time. And I said, you know, sometimes you may just need to choose. Either you're okay with getting Bs, because theater is really important to you, or if you want to just get A's, maybe you may say, I need to drop that extracurricular, because a lot of students, I feel like, are doing without sleep in order to try to get everything done that they want to do. And that really leads to burnout and also depression and anxiety. And I, I don't really think it's, it's a great recipe for success for your whole life. Okay. Any questions so far? No? Okay. So... Short-term assignments. By short-term assignments, I mean something that's due the next day, okay? 
you when you get home whenever you get home from school whether it's after practice or whatever these are the things you need to do first right away because they're due the next day okay there's a lot of resistance among students who say my homework's on google classroom my homework's online i don't need to write it down i'm not a big fan of that I do think, even if it is on Google Classroom, you need a nightly list of that's very short of what you need to do. So even if, say, your social studies teacher gives you a whole bunch of questions, obviously you're not going to just write all the questions down, but you could just write social studies, questions, GC, Google Classroom. And that's all you need to write. And then when you're done, you cross that off. because. The problem is when you don't have a master list, you, it's easy to forget things. You have your English on one web page, your social studies on another, your French on another, and you get all confused and you forget what you actually have to do. So before you even start your homework, make a master list of everything that you have to do. And don't just rely on. Sometimes, and this is especially in high school, you'll get long-term assignments. Assignments that may be due anywhere from two days to two months from now, or maybe even longer. These are, the, these are the assignments in my experience as a classroom teacher that are the hardest for most students to manage. Because if the due date, say I got, today's January 28th. And say the teacher says the deadline is in March 28th. When do most students start the project from, that's due on March 28th? March 15th. If that. If, if they start on March 15th, they're lucky. Most of them, or many of them, will probably start on March 26th. But the teacher is giving you two months because he or she expects you to do two months' worth of work. You cannot, even if you stayed up all day and all night, you cannot do two months worth of work in two days. So you need to have some kind of planning for these long-term assignments. My first big, and we're going to get into this more in the Mamarina, in the class that starts in Mamarina tomorrow night, but I really believe you need a big monthly calendar at least by the time you get into high school. And I, I recommend getting just those like desk blotter ones that are paper where you could tear off the month as they go. And you should, um, I, I kind of recommend writing in pencil so that you could, you know, erase. But you really do need to, at the beginning of every month, put down everything that you have, like extracurriculars or family obligations, things that I call the non-negotiables that can't be changed. Why should you do that? You need to figure out, well, how much time do I have that's not spent doing other things? Then you need to break your big projects into smaller tasks. So for example, if I have a social studies research paper that's due in two months, what are the, what are the different tasks that are involved in writing a social studies research paper, do you think? Well, research first. Got to research, yeah. Before the writing, writing is actually step four. Even before brainstorming. Organization. Uh, that's step three. I consider research finding my sources, and then I need to read my sources, and I need to take notes on them. So kind of reading and taking notes is step three, and then organizing or making some kind of outline is step three. And then writing is step four, and then what comes last? Revision. Any kind of revisions is step five, right? So if I can break a big project down into smaller steps, it won't seem like this huge big mountain I need to climb. It might just seem like five little mountains I need to climb, okay? Um, and then 
You really need to estimate how long will each step take to complete, and usually students always underestimate how long, so I recommend that they double their estimation. And then after you do that, you're going to assign blocks of time in minutes on your monthly calendar every day from now until the deadline. And actually, I recommend two days before the deadline so that you have like a little buffer I, um, in case you get sick or something like that so that you could still get it in on time so that you're working on it a little bit every day, maybe a half hour every day instead of 48 hours all at once, nonstop, no sleeping, no eating, okay? Questions? Okay. Um, okay. How many of you do homework with your phone next to you? Only one person? Really? Not a lot of honesty going on. Huh? Not a lot of honesty going on. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, how many of you listen to music while you do your homework? How many of you uh, have the TV on in the background while you do your homework? Sometimes, yeah. Okay, so all of these things require your brain. You think it's just in the background and you can concentrate. And back in the dark ages of the 1980s when I went to high school there was this you know they they said oh you know if you listen to Mozart while you read or do your homework you'll become really smart but even Mozart classical music is distracting your brain and what you're doing is your brain is going Mozart homework more and more likely Instagram homework um, you know, whatever it is, whatever, a little bit of Fortnite, homework. And those little micro switches that your brain has to do all the time, not only is it making you not do your homework to your best of your ability, it's also causing little tiny stress hormones to be released in your body. And over time, those stress hormones can lead to anxiety. There's an epidemic of anxiety in your generation, unfortunately, and I think in large part of it, it's because of the phone, okay? So just accept your brain cannot do two things at once. It can only do one thing at a time. It, that includes music, and it's do, going back and forth stresses out your brain. Now, if you are assigned four hours of homework, I do not suggest you should do four hours of homework and never stop, okay? I recommend that you, t you do work and then you stop and then you take a break and you enjoy your break while you do your break and then you start your work again. Now, how long you work and how long you quote unquote take a break or play really depends on you depends on your age. So I recommend a five to one ratio, meaning for every five minutes you work, you get one minute of play. Ideally, students in middle school should be at about 25 minutes of work, followed by five minutes of rest or play. And then hopefully by the time you're in high school, you can build up to about 50 minutes of work followed by 10 minutes of play. I don't really think you should go beyond 50 minutes. I think even adults need a, a break. And if you're doing sustained work, like really concentrating those 50 minutes, your brain needs a break after those 50 minutes. Any ideas of what like a really good break idea is? How do you take breaks now if you take breaks? Aiden. Well, I think like, I would like, first I go get like a snack or something, like goldfish or whatever. And then like, I think I just like sit down with my dog a bit and like relax kind of. Nice, I love the idea of playing with the dog. I also, hi, I also love the idea of snack. So, you know, our brains 
are attached to our bodies and they need fuel, you know, you might want to think about what you're putting into your body. So while goldfish maybe are really tasty, um, you might want to throw in some nuts if you're not allergic, or a piece of cheese, or hard boiled eggs, some protein, your brain needs some protein. Um, but that's, that's definitely not the worst thing I've ever heard. Yeah, good. Anything else you do for breaks? Go outside. I love that. Like maybe if your if your family has a basketball hoop, you could shoot hoops for a few minutes. Just run around. I know it sounds crazy, but I actually really like to dance. So I put on like some crazy dance music if I'm working. And my, I think the best breaks are actually breaks where you're moving around. And because you're when you're sitting there just like this you know your brain your body is not really uh active and your brain needs oxygen to function at its highest capacity and the way it gets oxygen is through moving around so i'm not a huge fan of taking a break on the phone i know students love to you know it, in the beginning, I would say if you feel like it, you're going to die if you don't check your Instagram once an hour, then okay, do your 50 minutes of work and check your Instagram for 10 minutes. But I would say the other thing you need to use your phone for is setting an alarm, not just for when the break starts, but for when the break ends so that you get back to work after the 10 minutes, okay? Um, okay, so I mean, a lot of these techniques, especially the no multitasking, are going to seem, I think, very hard to a lot of students, and the long term planning is going to seem very, I think, hard and difficult. But I would say try to have fun, maybe look at look at especially the break time as like a little reward for yourself, give yourself, um, try to have fun with it. Um, and just know that, you know, you're probably going to stumble a little bit in the beginning and that's okay. Don't view that as, oh, now I just have to give up everything, right? Try it again or try something a little bit different. Okay. Um, view it as a journey rather than like a one-time thing. Um, and also you may want to ask for help. Believe it or not, your parents or teachers have struggled with this too. I mean, I'm giving this talk and I still struggle with time management sometimes. So we may have tips for you that can help you kind of tweak what you're doing now. Okay. Um, so before we get to questions, um, I just would say, I would ask if you, if you thought this was helpful, if you want to review this on Google, that would help other people to find me. Um, here's all my contact information. And sometimes people kind of leave at the very beginning or at the when I get to this part. So if you do that, I would just say here, I have a little handout with all the time management, my top 10 tips on the back. And if you don't mind passing this back to Aiden and Shannon, that would be great. Thank you. And pass it to your guys. Thank you. And I'm going to also ask parents if you want to sign in. Um, questions? What's been the best time management tip you've ever come across in all the time you've been doing? Oh gosh, the best time management tip. I, I really feel like it's the breaking big projects into small ones because that's the one at least as a teacher that that would give students who generally struggle with time management the most cause for, for alarm. They would like hide their head in the sand and think, if I just don't think about this project, it's going to go away. But of course it doesn't. And then they wait until uh, the day before. They, they try to get something done because most kids want to get them get something done. And then they do a subpar job. 
But I think if they just know, oh, okay, I can break this into small manageable parts, that is really, I think, makes, makes it much more doable for them. Not just kids. Procrastination is a thief of time. It is. I mean, I, so I also teach college. And, you know, just today our new semester started. And, you know, I was doing this with my college students. And we were brainstorming how do you think is the best way to succeed in college. And the number one thing that students, because it's now it's the spring semester, they've all, all already had at least one semester, they said procrastination. You know, it's, it's nobody, look, I get, you know, for instance, I teach American history at college. I get, I love history more than everybody else in that room. You know, that's why I got a PhD in it. But, you know, you have to figure out ways to motivate yourself to do things that you don't want to necessarily do. And that's why I think those cards, those goals are really important. Because, you know, for instance, some of my students' goals today were to pass this class. Whatever, that, whatever the goal is, if you just want to pass, if you want to get an A, you're most likely going to have to do something that you don't want to do. You would rather play Fortnite for five hours. I get that. Um, but unfortunately, that's not a way to get an A in most classes. So you need some kind of balance. Good, good question. Any other questions? Aiden, yeah. Um, how, like, would you say you just talked about studying for tests as soon as you learn of it? Or like, or like... Really, that's a great question. When do you start studying for tests? Yeah. I would say generally, yeah, as soon as you learn of it. Hopefully your teachers are organized and they're letting you know at least a week before. Um, the other reason why I think it's so important to do your long-term assignments, start them right away, is because say you have this project, right, and it's due in two months, and you've started well in advance, and then you have a teacher who's not well organized, and they say, we're gonna have a unit test tomorrow. You now need to stop your long-term assignment work and put all of your efforts that night into studying for the unit test. If you also left your long-term assignment for the last minute, that's going to be tough to do, right? But when you've been doing a little bit all at a time, you can leave something and then devote yourself to just one, one subject. But yeah, I recommend start right away and do the same thing like I mentioned, projects or that paper. But rather than, say, dividing your studying into research, reading, outline, writing, revision, Maybe your studying will be, I don't know, I'm going to study chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, like whatever it is. Just divide the test content into how many days you have to study for it. Other questions? So take a look at your cards. Do you feel like you, and you don't have to tell me, and by the way, students, um, you do not need to tell your parents what your goals are. Those goals are for you. So if your parents say, let me see them, you don't have to show them. You could say, Dr. P said so. Um, but do you feel like you accomplished your first goal for the evening? Yeah? Did anybody not? accomplish their goal for the evening. All right, good, very nice. Well, I realize since there weren't that many questions tonight, you may like think of a question later on. So I wanna encourage you to email me, you know, ask me any question that you feel like is, is relevant or, or not, it's fine. And, um, I'm here at Rye at least two or three times a year. So, you know, look out for it. Some other talks I have are note taking and study skills, college planning for ninth and 10th graders. So feel free to come back and tell your friends, okay?
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you on Facebook Live for watching.